Well, hello everyone. This is Sean, back with my last video for the year 2022. Um, with this one, I plan on following up with a video that I've been working on for a year now. And what I've got here is my Amiga 1200 board that I got from Amiga Kit. And I also ordered several items to go with it. Um, I want to do something a little bit unconventional. Um, I had planned on buying a case, uh, remanufactured one of the new, new cases for it. also planned on buying a new keyboard for it. Uh, but those items have become uh, impossible to get. So, uh, and the prices have gone up significantly on those items um, when they do become available. Hopefully one day they will. Um, I originally wanted to buy a Amiga 1200 Reloaded from individual computers, um, but those unfortunately never came out. So I did end up buying this uh, Amiga 1200 uh, recapped motherboard. Uh, what I do like about this particular motherboard is that it is a PAL standard. So anybody that knows anything about Amigas will know that Amiga did very well in Europe, but did not do well in the States. Um, now, I happen to be living in Europe at the time when the Amiga was very popular, so I did enjoy the Amiga quite a bit. Um, and uh, now I'm back in the U.S., and uh, the Amiga is a very, very rare beast. Um, now, I do have uh, quite a collection of Amiga computers that I do plan on featuring on this channel, so... So be sure to um, subscribe if you haven't done so. And I also want to thank all my subscribers. Um, you've helped me a lot building this channel. It's been a lot of fun. Um, I know I'm a bit slow at putting out videos. I do this as more of a, uh, of a as a passion, uh, as a uh, hobby. Um, I don't do it for money. I'm not sponsored by anybody. Uh, I don't have like anybody mailing me things or anything like that. Um, so I'm just kind of featuring a bunch of the stuff that I've collected over the years. So with that, why don't we get started and let's take a look at some of the items I purchased for this, this Amiga 1200. So here's a box of some of the items that I recently ordered from Amiga Kit. Uh, the first thing on the top here, this is a, uh, a SCART cable for the Amiga. It just plugs into your RGB connector in the back of the Amiga. It also has the audio plugs that plug in um, and will go to a SCART uh, device. The next thing I got here is a, um, a floppy drive cable. Um, this is about a 10 to 16 inch floppy cable, so this will work nicely for what I got planned. Also, I have a Lyra 3. Um, PS2 keyboard adapter. So I got this because PS2 keyboards are easy to come by and Amiga ones are not. The next thing I've got here is a GoTech drive. I never planned on buying a GoTech, um, but for my uh, planned upgrade here, I think this will come in really nicely. So um, this is also from Amiga Kit. Uh, this has got the rotary dial on it and OLED uh, display. I have no idea how this thing's going to work, but it'll be interesting. So there's my GoTech. Uh, I also ordered the USB um, to go with it. It was cheap. It's got software on it. I have no idea what's got on there. And uh, this is a uh, memory expansion card for the Amiga 1200. Um, originally, I planned on doing something like a Blizzard. I, well, back in the day, I had a Blizzard 030, which was an awesome accelerator card for the Amiga 1200. But instead of going that route, I decided just to do the uh, memory expansion. Uh, originally, I wanted to get the individual computer's memory expansion board, but it was very expensive. Um, An Amiga kit had this. Um, this one has the uh, optional FPU, as well as a real-time clock added on there, that you can see right there. Um, not sure what to expect from this, uh, but I did want to use the, uh, I've already got an OTO processor on the motherboard, and I figured, why don't we just use that? Let's just go with it and see what happens. So this will be an Amiga 1200 with 8 megabytes of RAM. Now another thing I liked about this particular board is it's got lots of dip switches on it. Now that might sound crazy, but um, for my uh, case that I got planned, I'm going to have room to put things, and I thought it'd be cool to throw on some dip switches to be able to turn on off the FPU and also be able to select the amount of memory um, that you want to use with the, uh, the uh, memory expander card here. So let's see if this Amiga 1200 board that I bought a year ago is actually working. So I'm going to try connecting in the video cable. Now this is a uh, PAL system and I have an NTSC monitor so it's probably not going to work but sometimes you'll get a black and white image and uh, here's my power from the PSU. So 
So uh, as I suspected, I'm not getting a picture at all. That's too bad because I really would have liked to have seen an output from this uh, video. So let's hook in the uh, RGB connector with the old 1084S monitor. And I need power cable. Now this is a power cable from the Commodore 64 1541 disk drive. Give it a little time. Alright, so we have a good working board. It's got the 3.0 ROMs in it. Next thing I want to do is hook up the GoTech drive. Now, the important thing is just to line the red pin up, or the, the red side, with pin 1. And also the same thing on the drive itself. We've got pin 1's all the way to the right. And the power it has a snap on one side and that just plugs in and snaps into place. And your red is the plus five volt. Same thing on the motherboard. And here's my USB. Let's power it back on. So the GoTech's doing something. Now this one doesn't have the speaker, unfortunately. Kind of would have been nice to have a speaker. And I've got some kind of boot menu here. I'm not familiar with this HXC floppy emulator. I don't know anything about it. Um, don't have a keyboard yet, so I'll have to hook one up. Okay, so here I've got my instructions from my Lyra 3. Uh, installation looks pretty simple. It just basically says put it on a flat surface because you're going to have to press hard. And here's my adapter right here. And uh, according to the picture, it looks like I've got to bend this component here out of the way, and then the Lyra is going to face in this direction, so that it's pointing to the back of the computer right here. So let's go ahead and give it a try. So first thing we'll do is we'll go ahead and, I don't like doing this, but bending the component out of the way. Oh my god. And then this is supposed to just kind of like fit over top, and then push down. Just like that. Yep, so that is now installed. Nice good crunch. So now I need a USB keyboard to plug into this. We'll have that here in a moment. Um, the next thing I want to install was my um, memory expansion here. So this has got the real-time clock on it. Really very exciting. It's got an extra um, clock connector thingy. I don't know what, if anything, will ever come out for that. Um, Here's the pin connectors that allows me to change the RAM configuration. Also change the uh, FPU configuration, whether it's uh, external, internal, or off. Um, here's my uh, my FPU. It's a 40 megahertz FPU with the uh, crystal right there. So installation should be a breeze because um, the Amiga is not in the computer. Uh, so it looks like i got to turn it upside down like this. I've never actually installed a card on the motherboard without it being in the case. So this is like super, super easy. We're going to lift this thing up and put this guy in. Give it a little push. There we go. Install. So now I've got 8 meg megabytes of RAM, memory expansion. I've got a real-time clock here. And I've got my keyboard connector. And that should be pretty good. Um, by the way, this is where the FPU would have been installed if Commodore would have put one on the motherboard. Um, this would have been pretty nice to have, but I just didn't want to solder one in, so I eh, just went with that one. Okay, so for keyboard, all I got for PS2 keyboards is my trusty old, very dirty IBM Model M keyboard. So this is the, the clicky kind. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and plug this guy in and see what happens here. Interesting. So I do have cable going in. Turn on the monitor. So here is my Amiga setup. This looks absolutely ridiculous. This huge Model M keyboard with my little 1200 motherboard and my 1084S monitor. So let's go ahead and uh, flip this bad boy on. 
Uh oh. That doesn't look right. Oh. I'm not sure what's going on there. Hmm. So I'm wondering if I'm having an issue with the memory. So let's go ahead and turn her off and we'll try this again. Okay, so I went ahead and disconnected the uh, memory expansion. And I'm going to try flipping it on again, see what happens this time. There we go. All right, so I've got a menu here. So let's see what happens if I hit enter. Ooh, look at that. So I do have something going on here. I have no idea what this is. Auto boot. Let's see what happens. Ooh, I got a bunch of floppies, I guess. I don't know what that is. FF. So the keyboard works. That's uh, that's pretty nice. I have no idea what this thing's doing. <laughs> I have no idea. Floppy emulator file selector. Well, anyhow, okay. So GoTech is working. I have no idea what this thing is doing. Well, I might have to learn how to use a GoTech because exit, reinsert, exit to selector, auto boot. Okay, well, I'm going to have to read on this. Uh, I've saw see if there's any software on that USB. I have no idea. I, it's uh, doing something. I have no idea. Escape. Looks like it's got floppy images, but doesn't look like any of them are actually doing anything. Go tech update? I have no idea. Anyhow, okay, so let's see if I can do anything with my memory expansion now. Okay, so I just uh, changed the configuration on the dips so that it has no memory and no FPU. And on boot up, it does boot. Um, but I have no memory and no FPU. So next thing I want to do is I'm going to try um, flipping it to add uh, memory and see if that works. Okay, so here's my um, memory and I've got off right now and four and five and eight megabytes. So I'll just go up to four megabytes and see what happens there and just move it up one. There we go. So my FPU is still off. So let's see what happens with this. So that's a pretty good sign. It's not turning orange right away. So that means it's doing something. All right. So now I'll try changing my memory to the eight megs and see what happens there. It would be nice to have an actual Amiga Workbench image so that I can see the memory configuration going on on the screen. So memory does appear to be working. Um, can't really tell right now, but let's go ahead and turn on the FPU one more time. So I'll just give it a little push just in case this thing isn't fully seated and uh, it's got uh, off, internal, and external. Um, I think it was on external, believe it or not. So let's, uh, yeah, let's solder it in. Let's put it on internal, see what happens. I think this pin was all the way to external and not internal. So let's see what happens here. Screen did not turn orange this time. That's a good sign. Okay, so I, it appears that my memory is working and my FPU is working. It was just uh, uh, put to external, so it was actually trying to address this FPU, which doesn't exist, and that was causing the Amiga to fail. But, uh, but yeah, so I've got a working keyboard now, I've got memory, I've got real-time clock, I've got 
yeah, it's, this is cool. I got my GoTek drive, so I'm really excited about this. Um, there's one more thing I want to do, um, and uh, let me hint towards what I plan on doing here. So what I want to do is I want to put my Amiga 1200 inside this pet. I think this could be a really cool project. Um, it's going to be interesting because uh, the motherboard actually fits across, um, but there's going to have to be a little bit of modification in the steel case. Um, the keyboard, of course, this keyboard's not going to work, so I'm going to have to come up with something with the keyboard. Uh, but, um, but yeah, so if you're interested in following along, go ahead and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already done so. That's all I've got for now, so I hope everybody has a wonderful new year, and take care. See you soon. Bye.